you've got your friends to agree to a weekly game. You've picked an RPG and now you're ready to jump into playing. Before you step foot on your adventure though, it's actually a good idea to get your players together and have a chat before the game even begins. This is called a session zero. Yes, it's partly a chance to agree on types of snacks to bring so someone gets sweet and someone else salty, but it's also a way of having happier players, more enjoyable sessions and can save a ton of upset down the line. Beyond making characters, it can seem like there's not much to cover before a game starts, but there are actually many things you can discuss that make your life as a GM easier and means players have a better time playing. A win-win for everyone. I'm going to take you through the best things to cover in a session zero, no matter the type of RPG you're playing, from generating stats in Dungeons & Dragons to picking mythos in City of Mist. So, I'm Maddie from Dicebreaker, and this is how to run a Session Zero. Firstly, a Session Zero is a chance to explain the game you're playing. This can be as simple as going through the rules of your chosen system. Explaining the mechanics of play over message can be a struggle and not everyone will own the book or PDF to read through. This session allows you to get everyone on the same page, on even just the basics of what dice to roll when. From there, you'll want to explain what type of game you'll be running. This is less to do with the crunchy stuff and more about setting expectations on the adventure's tone. If someone comes in expecting high fantasy and political intrigue, but you're running a Monster of the Week style silly adventure, players will end up disappointed. But if they understand the game from the start, everyone is much more likely to have a good time. Preventing this kind of miscommunication is what a Session Zero is all about. Likewise, if you've homebrewed an amazing world, this is your chance to answer questions about it before playing. You've likely already shared the relevant notes and documents with players, but getting to properly chat about the gods or explain certain festivals can open up questions from players more than just reading through your doc. They might even come up with things you've never considered before, such as whether magic is commonly used or some other famous adventurers they should know. So make sure everyone is familiar with the aspects of your world they should know before rolling that first die. I understand you want people to read all of your notes, but realistically, no one is going to be as invested in our worlds as much as we are, especially when there's thousands of words to get through. Give them the spark notes now and they'll come crawling back for more lore once playing. Trust me. The most common thing people do in a session zero is to develop characters. This is where you cover how you want people to create stars, be it rolling or standard array if you're playing something like D&D, or perhaps letting people know you want all Greek gods as the inspirations for superheroes in City of Mist. Of course, that is only half of what goes into a character. Discussing the tone of the campaign is equally important to guide character creation. If you're playing superhero RPG Mutants and Masterminds, you could decide to set your campaign in the golden age of comics. This will have a very specific look and feel, so someone coming in with a modern day edgy character isn't going to fit into the whimsy, and either that player will have a bad experience, or you as the GM will struggle to merge them into the story. Of course, you can subvert expectations and have a ton of fun with that, and oops all Batman's campaigns of the heroes throughout the ages would be a blast, but players and GMs need to discuss it beforehand. Some games will have very specific notes on characters too. The world beyond the witchlight setting for D&D 5e needs every player to have something stolen from them in childhood, such as a sense of direction or sense of style, to even start the game, and it's directly tied into the story. The Session Zero allows you to lay out these expectations clearly, so no one turns up with something like a happy druid to the Curse of Strahd game and quickly feels 
out of place. I've done exactly that and it kind of ruins the first session. So save yourself and your players the trouble. The last point on character creation is that you're clear on what characters aren't allowed at your table too, such as evil ones or loners who avoid the rest of the group, or if homebrew classes aren't okay and which sourcebooks players can and can't pick spells or traits from. You never know what players might come up with, so it pays to cover your bases. Probably the most important topic to cover in your Session Zero are safety tools for the game. Making sure everyone is happy at the table is really important, so taking a minute to cover that means you'll hopefully avoid upsetting anyone or anyone upsetting you further into the game. A common tactic used in the TTRPG community are lines and veils, developed by Ron Edwards in a supplement for his sorcery RPG. Lines are things that you never cross. You all agree that these topics will never come up in the game. Veils, on the other hand, are things that can exist but happen off screen. You fade to black or reference them but don't actually roleplay the scenarios. Of course, you can't prepare for everything. RPGs are all about improvising, so something unexpected might still come up. In this case, I'd recommend using the X card by John Stavropoulos. Sorry if that's a mispronunciation. This is a piece of paper with an X drawn on it that players can hold up at any time to indicate they're uncomfortable or unhappy. GMs and other players can move the story on and away from the troubling matter, and later GMs can check in to see what new topic might need to be added to the group's lines or veils. This kind of thing takes minutes to discuss and make sure everybody enjoys themselves. This is a game, after all, we're here to have fun. And even if you know players, it's always worth going over this kind of thing again as each campaign is different and people's feelings change. Someone might be okay with swarms of spiders in a horror game like Call of Cthulhu, but could be less happy seeing them turn up in their enjoyable weekly D&D session. A session zero can be a lot of you laying out the rules and guiding players on backstories, but it's also a chance to get your players to work for you. Lay out any NPCs you want them to come up with or locations. In my City of Mist game, everyone had to give me two places they frequently visited in the city, as well as a couple of friendly NPCs. And of course, many of my players picked a long list of exes, but it still gave me a ton to work with to develop my campaign. Players also need to be clear with each other about their personal likes and dislikes in a game, not just the game master. Are they happy to have other players flirt with their characters and have interplayer romances? Or do they like dramatic moments of roleplay alongside the fight, so want time to experience that? It's better to work this kind of thing out early before the bard starts being a bard. This can also be an opportunity to have players make connections with other characters within the group. Maybe a ranger and a barbarian found out they both grew up at sea during the session. Great! Now they have a backstory where they were pirates together for a few years. Plus, if you're not sure how to link the whole group together for the first game, get your players to come up with a fun way they all know each other. Maybe they all turn up at the same park. Maybe they've already adventured together before and defeated a dragon. Or maybe they all took a free mead token for a tavern. The easiest way to get adventurers in one room. Whatever they decide with your guidance, it can save a lot of hassle joining their backstories together. For some games, the system actually requires you to do this kind of collaborative world building before playing. For example, in Kids on Bikes, players take turns deciding where the town is set, what it's known for, and rumours they've heard around it. From there, a GM can write the info up and give themselves time to plan and get a list of random NPCs ready before actually diving straight into play. Plus, players will be familiar with the setting before jumping on a bike and pedalling into action. 
Just because a system doesn't tell you exactly to do this, it doesn't mean you can't put your players to work. It's like dousing broccoli in cheese. Turns out they actually love it, and they never realize they're doing some of the GM's job they never wanted. One of the reasons a session zero is so important is that every table is different. You may have homebrew rules that new people aren't familiar with, or perhaps you allow players to flavor their spells differently, so we'll ask what their magic looks like when they cast it. Or it can be as simple as any dietary requirements for snacks. Everyone needs sustenance to make it through a big fight, and we don't want any hangry players, or even worse, GMs. I don't think of what horrors that could cause. You might also use different software than people are used to playing with. Make it clear what systems people need to work with, such as setting up an account on Roll20, or getting character minis ready for a session, or just giving them your address for an in-person game. Taking time to iron out issues before playing means no one will be trying to sort their camera for 10 minutes on Discord during the first game and eating into valuable playtime. And I am that person, I get it. We need time to work stuff out. So lay out even the obvious things in a session zero to make sure everyone is ready to role play as soon as game day rolls around. Now, this is just a fun extra I've really loved doing in the past. After a session zero, you can also have a session 0.5. This is basically a pre-game game. If all the characters agree that they've adventured together before, why not play out that little scenario before diving into the main campaign? You can also take this time to run one-on-one -on -one sessions with players so they can get familiar with a new class or try out some accents before having to reveal their character fully. In my latest D&D game, our DM took us each through a one-on-one -on -one session where our characters ended up finding the main quest that would eventually tie us all together. It meant that I really felt like I knew my character's parents having now met them. I had fun stories about how my familiar had stolen a koi fish from the temple pond. So by the time we started the first session, I had none of that new character nervousness because I totally knew who she was. Bad Irish accent and all. So those are my tips on running a session zero. You don't have to cover everything, just what feels relevant to your table. But the more that you do go over, the easier it should make running and playing your game further down the long, windy, bandit-filled road. If you want more RPG tips, then subscribe to the Dice Raker channel, as we've got a ton more to check out, as well as other wonderful tabletop content. You can also hit the join button below to become a member and get extra videos that go beyond the board games. You can also check out the latest tabletop gaming news and enjoy articles over on dicebreaker.com. But for now, good luck with your session zero, and I hope you have a lovely day.